What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, we have more legends in the sport weighing in on the highly anticipated biggest fight in the sport of boxing today between undefeated, newly crowned, three belt, unified, welterweight world champion superstar boxer who is widely considered by many to be top three best pound for pound fighters in the world. And Earl the Truth Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr. is now 28 wins, no losses, no draw. 22 big wins by way of knockout. He is uh, five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach at 32 years of age. And his biggest rival, an undefeated three division world champion, former junior welterweight, undisputed world champion, currently the reigning WBO World Boxing Organization welterweight world champion who is widely considered by many to be the number one best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, in Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Crawford is 38 wins, no losses, no draw, 29 big wins by way of knockout. He is 34 years of age, 5'8", with a 74-inch arm reach. With that said, this was already the biggest fight in the sport of boxing some years back, maybe about a year and a half, two years ago. Since 2019, uh, this has been talked about as the biggest fight in the sport of boxing but at that time, you had a heavyweight massive showdown for Undisputed that seemed to be on the verge of happening. And now today's time never came to fruition between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. That was at one time the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. And this was the second biggest fight to that fight uh, because that fight, too, was for Undisputed. And as we know, as the heavyweight goes in the sport of boxing, so goes the sport of boxing. OK, they carry the sport of boxing. Uh, but with that said, this is the second biggest fight now. Obviously, uh, Anthony Joshua was lost twice. De uh, Deontay Wilder has lost twice. And so now uh, it lost its luster and that fight never happened. And it was for Undisputed. Now we have this welterweight fight for Undisputed. And it's the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. And everybody can't stop talking about it. So with that said, you had Hall of Fame, well-renowned trainer in Freddie Roach. Okay. Freddie Roach has weighed in on this fight. Now, we know Freddie Roach. He trained uh, legendary eight-division world champion, iconic Filipino superstar boxer, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, okay? And what Freddie Roach had to say about this fight. Now, Freddie Roach has always, always, always viewed Terrence Crawford in very, very high regards. Freddie Roach is on record stating that uh, he didn't want Manny Pacquiao to fight Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford was Floyd Mayweather with more power and younger and that would end bad for Manny Pacquiao. So that's a fight he didn't fancy, okay? Uh, but he did fancy a fight for uh, Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence, okay? Uh, Freddie Roach, he stated that he likes the fact that Errol Spence is not as uh, a mobile, okay? He's not. He's more flat-footed than Floyd Mayweather and um, Terrence Crawford. He's not the boxer that they are, okay? And uh, now, uh, Freddie Roach, he stated that he wished they would have got the Errol Spence fight before uh, they fought Ugas. Obviously, Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence, they were supposed to fight August of, of last year, 2021. Okay, and Errol Spence suffered a broken or detached retina, which saw him have to be pulled from the fight. Insert uh, your Danis Ugas. Your Danis Ugas dominates Manny Pacquiao, wins a unanimous decision victory over Manny Pacquiao. So what he said was that he wished they would have got the fight with Errol Spence. Uh, rather than taking your Dana Sugis, which he stated on two days notice, we know it was far more than two days notice, uh, that he knew he was going to fight your Dana Sugis, okay? I think Freddie Roach means two weeks notice. He said two days notice, but it was more like two, two and a half week notice, okay? Uh, when Errol Spence was pulled from the fight and, uh, uh, your Dana Sugis was inserted as the replacement, okay? Uh, but with that said, you know, uh, Freddie Roach, he stated that, you know, he always kind of favored Terrence Crawford to beat Errol Spence. He has long arms. He has the ability to switch from orthodox to southpaw. Uh, he's rangy, you know, 74-inch arms, okay, high ring IQ. Uh, he's mobile, athletic, and he has power in both hands. Well, now Freddie Roach, he's decided that he's going to change his pick. And he's saying that, uh, no doubt, after he watched what happened with your Dana Sugis and Errol Spence, and your Dana Sugis being a big welterweight with a long arm reach, 73-inch arm reach. They updated. Initially, your Dana Sugis, who is 27 wins, now five losses, no draws, 12 wins by way of knockout. He himself was stopped in this last fight against Errol Spence in the 10th round. Suffered a broken nose, broken right orbital bone, and broken rib in the fight. 
uh, your Danis Ugas was initially uh, 35 years of age. He was, uh, um, you know, um, slated at five foot nine with a 69 inch arm reach. Uh, well, the night of the fight with Errol Spence, you can clearly see the size difference, and they updated it, okay? And they had your Danis Ugas at five foot nine and a half with a 73 inch arm reach, which seems a lot more likely, okay? So he clearly was the bigger man in the ring. He clearly had just as long, if not longer, arms than Errol Spence. Okay, and he was slightly taller than Errol Spence. Okay, and he was more stocky than Errol Spence. So uh, um, Freddie Roach is attesting to looking at uh, how Errol Spence was able to work his way on the inside. So he said that Errol Spence, uh, before the suffering that horrific car accident, just 12 days after unifying the, the belts against two-time welterweight world champion superstar boxer Showtime Sean Porter, September of 2019, he stated that. Terrence Crawford had his best opportunity to beat Errol Spence at that time. He said this version of Errol Spence has gotten smarter. He's, you can clearly see he's more committed. Uh, he's very physical. He says once he gets on the inside, that Terrence Crawford is going to have a very, very difficult time keeping him out of his wheelhouse, keeping him out of his chest, right? Uh, he says that, and you can see, this is what I've been saying, you can see somewhat of slippage from Terrence Crawford when he's in the orthodox stance. This is what I've been saying. Uh, Terrence Crawford was just as slick and elusive in the orthodox stands as he was in the southpaw stands, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, maybe it's the mindset of Terrence Crawford. Uh, maybe it's the fact that he's now moved up to welterweight and he's put more on more weight. Okay, uh, who knows what the reason can be? But at the end of the day, he's just not as elusive in the, in the orthodox stands as he once was. You look at the fight with Igas Kavalaskis when he was in the orthodox stands. Igas Kavalaskis had a lot of success. When he was in an orthodox stance against Kell Brook, Kell Brook's jab uh, for the first two rounds was beating Errol Spence, I mean, Terrence Crawford to the punch. I've never seen that ever, okay? Not with somebody who's predictable uh, as Kell Brook. Kell Brook is uh, somewhat robotic, okay? Uh, when you look at Kell Brook. Now, Kell Brook is a big welterweight, uh, as five foot nine with like a 70 inch arm reach himself, big, strong, technically skilled, technically sound boxer. But Kell Brook is predictable for somebody of Terrence Crawford's stature. And yet Terrence Crawford had a hard time judging his distance and his uh, range and the speed on Kell Brook's jab. He had to switch to orthodox. Once once he switched to orthodox, and you can see my play-by-play, -play, and I called that fight. And when I told you guys, once he switched to orthodox, he saw something in Kell Brook, and it was over. And I was 1,000% correct, okay? Uh, and then when he fought Sean Porter, he was in the orthodox stance. You can clearly see he was uncomfortable. We're trying to elude Sean Porter and his aggression and, uh, uh, you know, his attack when he was in the orthodox stance. Now, once he switched to Southpaw, Sean Porter was in trouble. He had a hard time trying to gauge uh, uh, the distance of Terrence Crawford, the speed on Terrence Crawford's jab, the angles that Terrence Crawford used out the Southpaw stance. Errol Spence is a natural, big, strong Southpaw, okay? So he's going to eliminate the advantage that Terrence Crawford has when Terrence Crawford is in the Southpaw stance against his opponents. That's not going to be the case against uh, um, um, uh, Errol Spence because Errol Spence is a natural big southpaw, okay, with a great jab and great timing. So with that said, you know, uh, uh, I believe that he, Terrence Crawford is going to struggle with the distance, the jab, uh, uh, and the timing of Errol Spence, okay, as Freddie Rose stated. And he's very physical once he gets on the inside. He breaks you down. He goes to the body relentlessly, okay? And so that's what Freddie Roach is saying. Uh, and then you have, uh, so Freddie Roach, he stated that after he witnessed what took place uh, uh, last Saturday with Errol Spence and your Dana Sugis, he stated that there's no doubt in his mind that Errol Spence is going to win the fight against Terrence Crawford. It's still a very competitive fight, uh, still a good fight, uh, still the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. And obviously Terrence Crawford more than has a chance to win the fight. Terrence Crawford is a great fighter, okay? Uh, so it's a 50-50 fight, you know, uh, just everybody's giving their opinion, their breakdown. Well, that leads us to Sean Porter, who shared the ring with both guys, who is on record saying that he believes Terrence Crawford is going to win the fight. Well, now Sean Porter is saying that, you know, um, after what he witnessed, you know, uh, this past Saturday, you know, uh, it would be it would be it would be him uh, uh, being a prisoner of the moment because he said after what I witnessed on Saturday, you know, uh, uh, with your Dana Sugis and how he broke down your, your Dana Sugis and stopped your Dana Sugis. He said it would be unfair for me to, to make a decision right now, right? So a, a bit, uh, Sean Paul is a bit, you know, uh, uh, backtracking on, you know, uh, I don't want to say he's backtracking, um, 
uh, uh, he is uh, uh, definitely rethinking, you know, uh, how this fight is going to play out until the point where Sean Porter stated that, why do we have to even pick who's going to win the fight? And this is something I agree with Sean Porter, but it's just not realistic. Sean Porter stated, uh, why do we have to pick a winner? Why can't we just enjoy uh, um, the fight and enjoy, you know, uh, this greatness on display and then talk about what we saw, what, what we witnessed post-fight, right? And I agree with Sean Porter 1000%. I would love to go down that route as well because uh, when you're a fan of the sport of boxing first, you can appreciate a fight of this magnitude. The last time we had a fight of this magnitude was 1981, uh, uh, September uh, 16th, uh, 1981, when we had an undisputed welterweight showdown between two undefeated great fighters in Thomas the Hempman Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard, okay? Uh, and so he says that, you know, why do we have to pick a winner, right? That's Sean Porter saying that, you know, I believe that he viewed what Errol Spence was able to do on Saturday. And now he's saying the fight is a lot closer than what I thought, initially thought, you know, now he's been in the ring with Terrence Crawford and he stated that Errol Spence is a harder, bigger puncher than Terrence Crawford. He's a volume puncher as well. And he has a relentless pace. He sets a very, very high pace, right? And, uh, you know, uh, I think that Sean Porter is viewing this fight closer than what he initially thought as well. Uh, we see Terrence Crawford back in training. He's with Snack Program. Errol Spence uh, uh, is back training just two days, less than 72 hours after his fight with Ugas. Uh, this is huge. And we know Errol Spence, like Terrence, Errol, uh, Sean Porter stated, he's a bigger puncher. Uh, he's now broke the orbital bone of Kell Brook and Yadanis Ugas. Uh, he he fractured a bone in Lamont Peterson's eye and Danny Garcia's eye, right? So is he the one-punch knockout artist that Terrence Crawford is? No. And that's a lot due in part to uh, the way they deliver their punches. Terrence Crawford uses angles, uh, and that creates a lot of problems. He, he creates angles. He creates uh, different looks and that his opponents don't see it coming. You understand? But this is going to be a fantastic fight. Terrence Crawford has power in both hands. Errol Spence is relentless. This is going to be what we've been waiting for. This is what the sport of boxing is all about. So let's see how it plays out. Looks like it could possibly take place September 17th. But let's see how this plays out and unfolds. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.